All right. So I think it's streaming us live on YouTube now. Um, so let me pull up my slides. Um, so I really want this to be interactive. So if you have any questions throughout, just ping me. I'll be monitoring the chat. Uh, I'll open it up on my phone so I can see the chat. Um, if you have like any ideas throughout, like any thoughts, feel free to share those too. We are, this is your event. This is your training. We are here for you. And the reason why we do this, the whole big rationale, and oops, there's my face on my phone. So let me stop the video there. Um, the reason why we do this, the whole rationale for it is um, you could do this project without any training, but by having some training, hopefully, number one, you're more comfortable with it and you can go ahead and get started right away without kind of fumbling around. But number two, your contributions will be more effective. Um, you'll have a better idea of what you need to do. And this training is really important, too, I think, just to get people excited about what we're doing. Um, this citizen science is best when you participate with others and when you have fun. Um, and I think coming together virtually or watching a recording um, where you see your peers ask questions, it's all part of the fun of this. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And hello, Verizon. My name is Caroline Nickerson, and I'm with the SciStarter team. Um, SciStarter, what we do all day, every day, is science that we can do together. We get people just like you from all walks of life, all different ages, all different countries around the world, involved in citizen science, which is public engagement and real research. And we've partnered with Verizon on this volunteer program where we've selected citizen science projects that help protect the planet by helping researchers learn more about it. Today, we're focusing on a project that is about pollinator populations. Um, but there are so many other projects that um, SciStarter works for Verizon on, including stall catchers, which focuses on Alzheimer's research, um, including uh, IC change, which focuses on monitoring weather and climate change, um, including Globe at Night, which focuses on monitoring light pollution, and so much more. So we really hope that you do a bunch of different projects with us, but we also hope that you enjoy today's training as well. So why are we doing citizen science? Well, the answer is millions of people enjoy science and nature. You probably count yourself in this number. Maybe you really like butterflies, or you're intrigued by different constellations in the night sky, or maybe you really like going on hikes, or maybe you're really interested in the brain and you like to read every article you can get your hands on, in the, on about the brain. Then you're in this number. You can count yourselves among the millions of people who enjoy science and nature, even though they aren't professional scientists. Well, the good news is thousands of scientists need volunteers to accomplish research that they couldn't do without you. Um, so one example is the Crowd the Tap project, which is also featured in Verizon's Citizen Science Volunteer Program. The Crowd the Tap project, um, it's an EPA funded project. It's out of NC State University, and they're asking citizen scientists to do a simple scratch test on their water pipes um, to see what they're made out of, be it lead or plastic or some other material. And by doing this and submitting your results to the Crowd the Tap online forum hosted on SciStarter, Crowd the Tap is able to create an inventory of safe drinking water across the United States. They literally couldn't do this project without your help. They can't go door to door and knock on everybody's door and say, hey, can I test your pipes? No. No, they need people in different communities around the country to opt in and volunteer their time to perform this test. And then we can make the world a better place and help protect the planet and protect ourselves by knowing about what drinking water is safe. So that's a project that couldn't be done by these researchers without the thousands of volunteers who have opted in to make the world better, to turn their curiosity about science into real world impact. But often, these folks can't find each other. The volunteers can't find the projects that need their help. They may find one project, you know, here and there, but maybe they want to do multiple projects. Maybe they want to volunteer their time across scientific disciplines. Well, SciStarter connects them. We connect you to the projects that need your help. So citizen science ultimately is a collaboration between scientists and those of us who are curious, concerned, and motivated to make a difference. It's a relationship, it's a partnership. We are working alongside each other to collect data of plants and animals we see around us, of water, of the natural world, to um, send in our observations, to conduct analysis with the Stall Catchers Project. You're literally watching videos of mouse brains and indicating whether or not you think blood vessels are 
are stalled or flowing to speed up the search for a cure to Alzheimer's disease. You're literally doing analysis in a gamified format when you participate in the stall catcher citizen science project. Um, so citizen science, basically, it's any way you volunteer your time to move science forward. And um, let me stop sharing my screen to make sure that I have some audio here. I'm going to go ahead. Oops, did I do it wrong again? Share computer sound. There we go. I'm going to show you this really brief video about what citizen science is. Did you know that people just like you are shaping science and their future through small but important actions? That's right. You don't need a lab coat. You don't need a science degree. We're not talking about kids' chemistry kits or build a rocket activities. We're talking about real science we can do together. How can I do that, you might be wondering? The answer is easy. Become a citizen scientist. Citizen science is all about people like you and me getting involved in things that matter to us, like the environment, our health, oceans, and even space. Science needs more eyes, ears, and perspectives than any single scientist possesses. Together, we get to make discoveries. We can make a difference by making and sharing our observations, analyzing data, or even playing a game to solve a problem. Want to learn more about citizen science, a movement that's sweeping the globe? You're in the right place. There's a lot of great material here to get you started and help you find, join, and participate in projects through SciStarter.org. And he's about to get into the main website, which can be a little overwhelming sometimes because there are thousands of projects that people have listed on SciStarter for you to discover and get involved with and in, um, in different events and tools and all these different facets of the citizen science experience. But we realize that sometimes to get people started, it's better to have a set program or just a few projects that we've picked out for people to explore just so they can, you know, get their feet wet and have like a, a curated path for participation and also collective impact with your group around a set number of projects. So that's what Verizon has done. On our SciStarter.org forward slash Verizon page, there are so many different projects. I think we're up to 24 now, if I last time I checked. And um, these are projects that allow you to monitor water quality, to share pictures of nature, and play online games to advance medical research, among other topics. Um, and each of these projects has a corresponding event on Involvesoft. So when you're on that SciStarter.org forward slash Verizon page, when you go there and you make your SciStarter account and you participate in a project, because the majority of these projects are SciStarter affiliates, the number and the frequency of your contributions will automatically track as long as you use the same email for both projects, the same your Verizon email to sign up on SciStarter and your Verizon email to sign up for the project. But then after you participate, we ask that you go back to Involvesoft to report the amount of time. So you could say, I spent 15 minutes doing this project. I spent one hour doing this project. However long you spent, you report your time on Involvesoft. And we're able to kind of cross-reference it with the number and frequency of um, contributions to get an estimate, just to make sure that everything's tracking and we're all good to go. Um, so citizen science, we've been talking broadly about the field and collective impact that Verizon can have. I wanted to show you all this video so you can understand some of the statistics that we've had from the whole citizen science community and what they've done with some nature focused projects. So we'll go ahead and play it. <laughs> I love that video because it really shows the impact we can have when we work as a crowd to make the world a better place. So our specific spotlighted project today, um, out of the thousands of projects we could have picked and the 20 or so projects that we have in the Verizon program is the Great Sunflower Project. And the Great Sunflower Project team made this video to explain to you how to get started. Hmm. 
There we go. Did you know that there is a crisis facing pollinators like birds, bats, butterflies, and especially bees? The Great Sunflower Project needs citizen scientists to identify where pollinators are doing well and where they are not. This is important because one third of the food in the U.S. depends on pollinators. It's easy to help. Watch for pollinators on sunflowers or any other flowering plant. First, identify and count the flowers you are monitoring. Count the pollinators you see on the flowers and record the amount of time you watched. Upload your results on a computer or smartphone. Join the thousands of other volunteers across the country who are part of the Great Sunflower Project. You can make a difference. So that's the basic gist of it. The Great Sunflower Project is the largest citizen science project focused on pollinators with over 100,000 different participants. And you might be wondering, why is it called the Great Sunflower Project if I don't have to focus on sunflowers? And that's because when they first got started, they were um, focusing on sunflowers because they were sending out seeds to people to grow on their own. And uh, they were able to, after the sunflowers grew, um, monitor how many pollinators visited. It was just like an easy way to jumpstart people's participation. But then they broadened it, broadened it to any flowering plant. So I usually do it with my Chinese hibiscus. Um, and when I show you a demo later that I filmed with, at a previous Verizon event, I did indeed go outside to the Chinese hibiscus and monitor it for pollinators. Um, but th the reason this project is so important and um, why they ask you to monitor these pollinators is because pollinator populations worldwide are at risk, especially in the United States. I'm sure you've all have seen the headlines about um, how bees are struggling, uh, different pollinators like um, hummingbirds, for example. There are so many different types of pollinators that we can monitor. Um, and by identifying where populations might be at risk, um, we're able to um, maybe have some preventative action or maybe be able to do something to intervene to help those populations. Um, so the Great Sunflower Project is based out of a university in California, but it is a global project where they take observations from all over the world. And I, the number one question I get for pe from people when they participate is, what if no pollinators visit my plant while I'm observing it? And the answer is definitely submit that data. That's almost more important than anything else. Um, because if no pollinators visit, that means that the pollinator population in your area might be at risk. So as we mentioned, why are we doing this? This project helps identify where pollinators are declining and how we can help improve their habitats. We need pollinators. They help produce more than one third of our food. Or in other words, bees are responsible for every third bite of food. And um, something that I realized when I was doing one of these events recently is I was helping everybody um, participate in the project and I was giving them all the basic steps, but some people didn't really understand what pollination was. Um, so the Great Sunflower folks told me that this video would be a particularly good one to play. So I'm going to go ahead and play it for you so we can understand a little bit of uh, what we're trying to help. Like, what is pollination? What are pollinators? Oops, let's go back. Like all living things, plants reproduce to ensure future generations. But since plants can't move from place to place, they need a way to transfer pollen from one plant to another. Wind is a major pollinator, but it acts unselectively. Insects, on the other hand, pollinate flowers with precision. The bright colors and strong fragrances of flowers attract insects. Once lured to the flowers, insects discover pollen and nectar. Bees, butterflies, and other insects gather pollen and nectar to feed themselves and their young. As insects move from plant to plant, they transfer pollen from one flower to the next. Fertilization occurs and seeds are formed. Over time, flowers have developed colors, smells, and shapes that successfully entice insects. At the same time, insects have developed features and behaviors that make them more effective pollinators. So that's the ba very, very basics of what pollination is anyway, and what types of creatures we're trying to study. 
So how do we participate? Step one, find any flowering plant. For example, a sunflower or in my case, a Chinese hibiscus. Step two, observe it for five or more minutes, record all the pollinators like bees or butterflies that visit. And then step three, report that data online. So what type of pollinators could you possibly see? This is not a complete list, but you could see bumblebees, carpenter bees, western honeybees, birds, butterflies, bats, beetles, flies, wops, and etc. And you might be wondering, I don't even know what a carpenter bee looks like. How am I supposed to identify it? Well, you can use this app. Just for the sake of full disclosure, Seek by iNaturalist is not related to the Great Sunflower Project in any way. It's just an app that I find helpful for identifying different species of plants, animals, insects, etc. Um, so when I participate in the Great Sunflower Project, I typically download the Seek app on my phone um, and I use it to identify number one, the plant I'm observing, and it gives me the scientific name, which I love. Um, number two, if a pollinator happens to come by, I can use Seek to identify it and I can say, oh my gosh, that's a carpenter bee. I'm able to note how many of that type of pollinator visited my plant. And number three, I just use Seek in my daily life, even though I'm not participating in the Great Sunflower Project, because it's just so amazing how Seek is able to use artificial intelligence to identify different plants and animals. And um, I think this video does a much better job demoing it than I do talking about it. So I'll play this for you. As you can see, Seek is just like a lot of fun. They have different challenges and whatnot, but the main purpose you can use it for, for this project is to identify the plant, the flowering plant you're observing and the pollinators that might visit that plant. So it's a completely separate app, but I really enjoy it. So this family, um, they're, I actually know them. They're up in the Pacific Northwest. They're participating in the Great Sunflower Project. They picked a flowering plant, they're observing it, and they're waiting for the pollinators to come visit. So I'm going to exit this right now. I'm going to take you to our Verizon SciStarter page. So SciStarter.org forward slash Verizon. So let's pretend that I came through on InvolveSoft. Um, so I there's a, a, an event on InvolveSoft where I can um, study pollinators. And um, I'll show it to you at the end of this event. Um, this event, by the way, it's worth one hour of service time. Because at the end, I'm going to set you loose to participate in the project on your own. And that will count for part of this event. But if you want to keep doing the project, if you find that you're really hooked, um, you'll be able to um, participate every day if you want to via the event on InvolveSoft. I personally find this project like very peaceful because um, I can sit there in my garden, I can see how many pollinators visit, and I can do a good deed by helping monitor their populations. But So this is the SciStarter.org forward slash Verizon page, and um, I know we have a few people on the line with us right now, and we also have some folks who are going to be joining us at two o'clock to watch this recording. So whether you're experiencing this live or watching the recording. At this point in the program, I always ask you to go to scistarter.org forward slash Verizon. I'm going to put the link in the chat as well. And this is the part of the program where you'll, you'll make your SciStarter account. So HTTPS dash dash scistarter.org forward slash Verizon. And please make your SciStarter account with your Verizon email address. So you can make your SciStarter account on the left toolbar here. Um, I already have an account. I've contributed many, many times. Um, but if I'm going to pause for just a sec. And if you have any trouble making your account, please let me know in the chat. Or if you're watching this via recording, please email me at carolinein at scistarter.org. That's right. It's carolinein at scistarter.org. I'll actually 
put my email up on the screen while you all do this in case anybody has any trouble making their SciStarter account. So Caroline N at SciStarter.org is the person you'll contact. And for those who are watching live, um, if you've successfully made your account, feel free to watch, let me know in the chat as well. All right, last call for any issues for those who are watching live. Was everybody able to make their account? All right, I'm taking that to be a yes. So we'll move on to the next step. So let's pretend I've made my account. Uh, I'm logging into my long existing account. Um, now that I've made my account on this page, I can scroll down on SciStarter.org forward slash Verizon, and I can click the Great Sunflower Project. So I can come back to this page anytime I need help. Um, and on this page, there are a number of different documents to get you started. This is a project a lot of Verizon employees like to do with their families. Um, so we actually have a printable color and learn sheet that you can download off this page. I sometimes color it just for fun, um, but it's a, it tells you all the different pollinators that exist out there. Or, well, not all of them, but 11 of them. There are 11 different pollinators on this page. And it's just a nice little um, kind of sidebar piece to this main project. Um, there's a quick start guide you can read through if you need help that takes you through all the steps. Um, and then I always use the single count data sheet, but there's also a multiple count data sheet. So I'm going to show you both of them right now, just so you can get an idea of the differences. Um, so this is the single count data sheet. Um, you'd put your name in. School garden name, you leave blank because um, we're participating in our own communities. Um, you put the date, the month, the date, the time. I mean the year, and then you put the start time, the end time, and total minutes spent observing. They ask you to spend at least five minutes observing a given plant. And then you do your plant type, which you can identify if you don't know it by using the Seek app. And then you indicate how many flowers on that plant you watched. So on my Chinese hibiscus plant, there are like 10 different flowers right now. So I would usually watch all 10 at once and I would put 10 there on the form. And then you identify which pollinators you saw, um, and if you saw different species, you can identify them through seek and you can write them down here and add any notes if you have any special notes. And if you didn't see any pollinators, definitely check this box because that is the most important data. Um, and then you'll enter um, this data on the Great Sunflower Project's website. Um, but I always take the data sheet outside with me because I find it helpful. So let's look at the multiple count data sheet to see why it's different. So you would use this if you're doing it over time and you're submitting all your data later. So let's say you're going to do a count every day for the work week. On Monday, you'd put the start time and the end time. On Tuesday for count two, you put the start time for the end, the end time, et cetera, et cetera. And you'd add all the dates you did it. Um, I always do the single count data sheet because I just find that easier to keep track of. All right, so here I am. So what are my steps? Before you get started, create a SciStarter account with your Verizon email. Done. After reviewing the steps listed here, click Participate Web to get um, below to get visit the project website. Okay, I'll do that at the end. Um, once you're on the Great Sunflower Project website, click Login and then click the box on the page at the bottom that says Login using your SciStarter account. Your participation to this project will be credited in your SciStarter dashboard. Awesome. Also, if you forget to do this part and you just create an account on Great Sunflower, as long as you use the same email for both, it'll automatically track, but it's up to you. Step four, you're ready to go out and observe. You can print off the pre-made data sheets or use the quick start guide, which you can find on the project website to review the type of data the project requests for an observation. The best and most useful way to contribute to the great sunflower is to focus on a particular site or set of sites. Every time you visit your yard, favorite park, or wild area, you can do a pollinator count on any of the plants in that space. And in fact, you can actually, even if you're in a super urban area and you just have weeds growing up between the cracks and the sidewalk, if those are flowering plants, you could even observe those. I mean, it's really wherever you can find a flowering plant. And it could be native, non-native, cultivated by humans, or completely wild. It's just any type of flowering plant that pollinators might visit. 
when you are done observing, get back to the project website and make sure you are still logged in. Then click Add Account on the website homepage and fill out the data entry form. Thank you for participating in this project. So let me head over to the website. OK, so you don't have to do any of this stuff yet. Step one could just be you know, adding your account. So I'm actually going to play you all a demo I did with the Verizon Media folks um, during their Great Build project. So let's jump ahead a little bit. Um, OK, so oops, took me ahead. And while I get this all queued up for you, if there are any questions so far, please put those in the chat. Um, so you're on this page, you click Participate Web, um, and you click either Login, and if you're creating an account, make sure you use the same email you use to sign up for SciStarter, so everything tracks. And you can also log in through SciStarter on this website. It's up to you. The main thing is just to make sure it tracks. And if you uh, create a new account, make sure you use the same email that you use to sign up on SciStarter. Um, so hopefully that's your Verizon Media email address. And we learned late, earlier today that the VPN can cause some issues. So just keep that in mind as you're logging in and participating. Um, so here I am. I have my account, all the observations I've made, and I can click Add Account. And stationary is the kind of monitoring we recommend. We recommend that you go outside and for at least five minutes, look at a particular plant, record how many pollinators visit it. And um, I'm actually, I usually go outside with my data sheet and then um, come back and say I recorded an observation moments ago and submit my data that way. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a sec and um, I am going to get rid of my virtual background. So you're able to see my data sheet. Here it is. Um, and you don't have to put a school garden name. That's just there in case you're with. And remember, you can print out that data sheet from the Great Sunflower subpage on SciStarter.org forward slash Verizon. Oops, let's go back. And then and, um, come back and say I recorded an observation moments ago and submit my data that way. So I'm going to stop sharing for a sec. and. Um, I am going to get rid of my virtual background. So you're able to see my data sheet. Here it is. Um, and you don't have to put a school garden name. That's just there in case you're with a school. You can leave that blank. I, uh, you can put school of life, whatever you want. Um, you put the date, you put the time. So I observed for five minutes earlier today. And my plant I identified through Seek. Um, so I'm going to quickly switch to my phone in just a second. Um, so you're able to um, follow me along as I participate outside. Um, so let me switch to phone. Going over. I'm so excited to participate with you all. We got some amazing pictures earlier today that hopefully I'll be able to share out with the whole team. Um, Verizon Media, you guys are amazing. Um, you observed some gorgeous flowers and were able to record pollinators are not. One important thing to keep in mind is if no pollinators visit, that's a really important data point. Um, then, you know, maybe pollinators are in trouble in that area. So here I am. I'm going to mute myself so you don't hear a crazy echo in this recording. I'm going to go outside now and contribute. All right, let's go. Good times. Very excited. And for everybody following along today, if you'd like, you can go outside right now and contribute as I'm contributing if you're watching this on your smartphone. Or you can wait till the end because I'm, I'm definitely going to give you some time to make your own observations. So that's just an FYI. If you want to go ahead and get started, you can just follow along with me. Here we go. We're going on a journey. I'm going to look at my beautiful Chinese hibiscus and show you all how to monitor a plant, a flowering plant with the Great Sunflower Project. And someone asked earlier, and I thought this was a really astute question, um, does it matter if the plant is native or non-native? It doesn't because they're studying population numbers of pollinators. They don't 
um, keep track of whether or not plant, well, you were to say the type of plant, so they could keep track of it, but that's not the central research question here. A pollinator can visit a native or a non-native plant. Even though native plants are generally healthier for pollinators, um, they want to study all sorts of different things. Um, so I'm almost outside, making my way. Um, okay. And I'm going to pull up my camera, start the video. That's my face. Hey, everybody. And this is the plant we're going to monitor. This is the hibiscus. That's a bud, but we're really focusing on this one. So on my data sheet, I'm just going to say I'm watching one flower on the plant, because that's, that's all I'm going to watch. And let's pretend that I actually don't know what type of plant this is. Let me share my screen and show you. Remember, Seek is a separate app. It's not related to the Great Sunflower Project. It's just a fun tool you can use if you'd like. Um, okay, so I am sharing my screen. Here's Seek. I use the camera icon. And there it is, it's a Chinese hibiscus. And if I take the picture, I can use the new photo and view the species to get the Latin name. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And if I was doing this project, um, like I already did an observation once earlier today. And what I did was I set the clock for five minutes. I put a little alarm on because that's the minimum contribution you can do, five minutes. And I sat here and I waited and I chatted with folks. Um, let's pretend this is a cooking show. I already submitted an observation for this one. I only saw one fly. Um, I didn't get a chance to identify that fly with Seek, but if I had been extra cool, I would have identified the fly and got its Latin name. Um, but I didn't think of it because I was busy chatting with everybody. So let's pretend I sat here for five minutes. And I monitored the plant. So I'm going to stop my video and go back inside. And remember, five minutes, that's the minimum contribution. You need to contribute for at least five minutes um, to submit your observation to the Great Sunflower Project and provide them with meaningful data so they can understand how pollinator populations are changing. Um, and I mean, we all care about pollinators, right? And this project I really like because it can be kind of meditative to sit out there for five minutes and think, oh, wow, like I'm just gazing at these flowers. I'm counting the bees that join. I'm in harmony with nature. And you can do it in a city. You can do it in a rural area. You can do it in the suburbs. You can do it anywhere where flowering plants are found, anywhere in the world. That's why it's a great project for folks of all types. All right, so I'm going to exit my phone and go back to computer. All right, my friends, I am back. I'm going to share my screen again. So to finish it off, you know, let's say, um, let me go back to Verizon Media. That keeps me grounded when I lose track of things. And that was a special page we made just for the day for Verizon Media, but you would go back to the main Verizon page. Um, and I actually want to show you this video because I wiped my address out from the presentation. Hello, area. hello, my name. All right, so there we go. I can click the Great Sunflower Project, make my way over there. Um, I can add account, so you click that add account button stationary because I sat there for five minutes, let's pretend, um, to submit my data. And I logged in through SciStarter on the Great Sunflower Project's website, just as an FYI to make sure my contributions would track. I keep doing that. Do it in the suburbs. All right, here we go. Add account, so you click that add account button stationary because I sat there for five minutes, let's pretend, um, to submit my data. And I completed an observation moments ago. My location is, I've done it before, that's my house. Don't share that with anybody. Counting on you all. Number of flowers washed was one. I can put the Latin name of the plant because it was a hibiscus. Rosa Sinius are a Chinese rose. Thank you, Seek, for helping me identify that. I saw one fly. And of course, you can um, say all the different ones you saw, identify them as best you can. And um, if you saw a different type, you can select that. 
If you didn't see any pollinators, that's really important. Make sure you note that. That's a huge data point to know. And at least five minutes observing, remember, that's the minimum. That's everything in a nutshell. We urge you to keep contributing. So that was, I like that video because number one, I was able to edit my address out. But number two, it showed that um, it was something fun I was able to do alongside a big group of Verizon folks. Um, so Verizon Media for the Great Build invited me to um, get like about 100 people together on Zoom and we all did the project at once at the same time. So if you all find that you really enjoy this project and you wanna get some of your coworkers to do it with you, you totally can. You could, I would be happy to host a Zoom meeting with them, a workshop, talk a fla about flowers, talk about pollinators. It's something we can do when we're physically distant, but we can be together online contributing to the same cause. Um, so the main goal of citizen science is to support universal lifelong learners while actually accomplishing something in science. Um, I hope you all learned something today. I hope you learned a little bit more about pollination, our, um, why pollinators are important about in terms of like the food supply, how you can actually literally contribute to real science to help monitor them. That's something you learned today. Um, and you can keep learning at any age and you can do citizen science at any age. Um, so SciStarter, you know, it's the gateway to those thousands of projects, but that Verizon page is just for you to get started in some projects that we handpicked for you where you can get volunteer time. And your SciStarter dashboard for those affiliate projects, which is the majority of those on the Verizon page, you can go back and see the number and the frequency of your contribution. So on that day, after I contributed to Great Sunflower, I saw I had one recent contribution in my dashboard and that all tracked because I logged into Great Sunflower with my SciStarter account and even if you forget to do that, as long as you make your um, Great Sunflower account with the same email that you use to make your SciStarter account, everything will track. Um, and of course, please do not forget to report your time on Involvesoft. We really want to make sure you get volunteer hours for this and also that we're able to track the number of your contributions by, you know, doing everything we just said about uh, logging in on the Great Sunflower through your SciStarter account or using the same email for both. Um, so in conclusion, this last um, about 23 minutes, I want you to go outside wherever you are, as long as it's not raining, if it's raining, go, do it later. Um, but wherever you are, if you're in a city, if you're in the country, if you're in a suburb, or literally anywhere on this planet, I want you to go outside, I want you to find a flowering plant, I want you to observe it for the Great Sunflower Project. Remember, these are the key tips. Observations have to be at least five minutes long. Um, if you don't know what plant you're looking at or what pollinators are visiting, you can use the Seek app and that's in the Apple App Store as well as Google Play. So you can download that on your smartphone or your tablet. You can use the Seek app to identify plants and pollinators if you don't know what you're looking at. Um, and then after that, after you finish observing, um, you can go to scistarter.org forward slash Verizon, click on that great sunflower project, go to that project, log in with your SciStarter account and submit your data. And remember, we have a data sheet for you on that SciStarter.org forward slash Verizon Great Sunflower Project for a single count that you can download and fill out. Um, if you want to print it out, I usually do that. You can also just take notes maybe on your phone, but that gives that data sheet will give you the fields to look for while you're out there observing. Um, so I really hope that you enjoy it. I'm gonna pause now for questions for the people who are watching live, but otherwise, Go ahead, get outside, monitor pollinator populations. And if you see anything cool, feel free to email me at carolinen at scistarter.org. We're actually doing a blog post soon about all the awesome work Verizon volunteers have done for the Great Sunflower Project. So if you see anything super cool or you just wanna send me a picture of the flowering plant you're observing, I'll include that picture in my blog post. So feel free to email me at carolinen at scistarter.org. And for those of you who are watching the recording who didn't tune in for the live session, um, you can also email me with any questions you have or you can, you're welcome to give me a call as well. Um, I'm gonna put my phone number in the follow-up email I'm sending to all of you. Um, so I'm not seeing any questions come in on the chat. It's your last chance for questions. Um, and for those of you who joined late, I'm, I'm about to email the recording to everyone who RSVP'd on Involvesoft. Um, so you're, you can watch the recording and catch up there. 
Um, but otherwise, I'll see you all soon. I hope that you enjoy doing citizen science and spend these last 20 minutes going out there and doing it. Thanks so much. Last chance to get things in the chat.